He appreciates people that are successful, and he wants to know why, and he wants to make sure that he hires people and works with people that have that same success orientation. Uh, uh, and breaking glass or going that nature, if it's necessary, he's clearly in favor of that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. You know, the show was a big success. And, you know, the fact that he's proud of it and he wants to keep his name on it, I guess, you know, I guess I'm okay with so long as he's not having a role in anything while he's the, the commander in chief, right? Well, I, I really doubt that he will. Exactly. I, I think that's uh, as part of just as part of his career. You know, he's been with that show for 14 years, so um, let's just see what that is. I'm, I'm sure that will work out to be uh, on his own time. Bob, so much to talk to you about from the moonshot cancer opportunity that is in front of us as well as what's going on in, the, in your business or the TV and media business. Let me ask you about the M&A that we've been seeing, in particular the AT&T Time Warner deal. This is a proposed $85 billion merger. Uh, the abandoned deal with CBS and Viacom, we, we heard yesterday that uh, the Redstones are pulling out of this idea that they want to that they want to merge CBS and Viacom. That's also something to take note of. First off, your thoughts on the Time Warner AT&T deal. You think it goes through? Well, you know, I was a, uh, a lawyer before I was a businessman. Uh, the, uh, I, on, on the face of it, it, sh it shouldn't be a problem. It's vertical integration. It's not horizontal integration. Vertical integration is not against the law. Uh, so, I, you know, if this is a political issue. It isn't a legal issue, in my opinion. It should be, uh, it should be approved. Okay, so you think it should be approved, but, but Donald Trump actually said, look, it's too much power in too few hands. He, on the campaign trail, he said he wouldn't, he wouldn't approve it. I wonder if his Justice Department is, in fact, going to approve well, it. That, that, well, that's a different, that's sort of a different issue. Uh, and that's where the political piece comes in. Maybe there'll have to be some negotiations involved in that or whatever. But I think from a straight legal point of view, it's a, it's a, go, it's a go idea. So what do you think about how the world is changing in this business, Bob? How do you see TV and media merging or not merging in the coming five years? How will the, the business look different from your standpoint? Well, I think they, they each help each other out. Um, uh, the Internet is getting stronger because it's got a lot of video and the, uh, the people in the video business are using a lot of internet to enhance their own activities and cable television gets enhanced, broadcast television gets considerably enhanced, especially news using internet uh, tactics and tools and social media. So I think they, they're going to have to just coexist and uh, the smart people are going to do both and they're going to learn how to optimize their own uh, business plans by using uh, the things that are available to them now, which is satellite, cable, uh, broadcast television, and the internet. Any any thoughts on the Viacom CBS deal and why the Redstones say they don't <laughs> want to merge them now? Well, you know that's like a, this is almost like a this is almost I don't know whether it's a comedy or a tragedy. Yeah. But every um, every every day there's something else. That's really a family problem. They just have to work it out. I don't think it's a it's an issue that the United States should be facing. I don't think it's a much of a Wall Street issue. Uh, you know, Viacom stock has not done well at all. CBS has done very well, and they can probably operate that way for a long time until they figure out a better one. Yeah, we, you wonder if, if Viacom's going to have to sell, sell more assets, in, in fact. Uh, so we'll see. I think that story continues. Well, I, I, think they certainly, I think they certainly should, but, uh, you know, Sumner Redstone was never a seller. It was always a buyer. Yeah, but looking at the prospects of Viacom and what the stock has done, we'll see if the, he changes his mind. But really want to get to the important stuff, Bob, with you, because President Obama signed the 21st Century Cures Act yesterday. That includes funding for the Cancer Moonshot initiated, uh, an initiative rather. It's led, of course, by Joe Biden. Watch this. Got to get your reaction. Like many of you, I believe that the United States of America should be the country that ends cancer once and for all. We're already closer than a lot of folks think. And this bill will bring us even closer, investing in promising new therapies, developing vaccines, and improving cancer detection and prevention. Ultimately, it will help us reach our goal of getting a decade's worth of research in half the time. And as Joe said, that time counts. Bob, you created the Suzanne Wright Foundation in memory of your wife to bring attention to pancreatic cancer. Tell us about Code Purple. We all love Suzanne Wright, and I've had so many years with her and with you. Uh, you've done so much for autism and now pancreatic cancer. Well, I, I did a... Um a 13-month investigative report on pancreatic cancer. That's what it was. I went through 
I went through Su with Suzanne her horror of nine months from diagnosis to her death this summer. And then four months after that, I've gone over what went wrong here, what, what can others benefit by, and, that, and that's what the, that is all about. I, I should point out that the, the, uh, the moonshot deal, the whole 21st century, is a great idea. It's $6 billion, $5 billion of right. that will go to the NIH. This is where I come in. Yeah. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for the new administration, especially Donald Trump and, and Dr. Price, who's going to run the Health and Human Services, to really look at how well that money is being spent. And I would tell you that in my investigation, for instance, the, right. the, uh, the National Cancer Institute has failed in uh, failed dealing with pancreatic cancer for 50 years. Wow. There has been no improvement in mortality. 92% die and within a couple of years, most in the first year, that's 50 years, every right. single year, you flunked. That money should probably go privately. It should be looked at how it can be rearranged. Yeah. That's what my organization is all about. People on the West Coast now are trying to raise substantial amounts of money to bypass right. the NIH, and I had to bypass them to do uh, the, uh, the, the missing project, $40 million dollar project with no help. Thank you so much for your efforts. Bob